On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we are beginning our review series on the Teledyne FLIR Cirrus. This is a thermal drone. It is an enterprise solution, but it's very compact for what it is capable of. It comes with a thermal sensor as well as an RGB sensor, so it's super versatile in the field, especially for law enforcement and emergency response. That search and rescue application, we're going to be testing that quite a bit over the next few videos about the Cirrus. I'm really excited to get started, so let's start from square one with an unboxing. Let's talk drones. What's up? It's Chris the Drone Geek and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots based in the United States. Make sure you check them out online if you've got your part 107 at thedroningcompany.com and across all major social media platforms. So today we are starting our review series on the Teledyne FLIR Cirrus drone. This thing is really cool. I've already had it out in the air one time just to sort of get a feel for it before we started making content about it. But first, what I want to show you is what you get with the Teledyne FLIR Cirrus drone. It's a really cool little bundle and it's perfect for search and rescue emergency responders because it's compact and it has its own very nice little backpack carrying case. So without further ado, let's go downstairs to my dining room table and get this unboxing started. Okay, so we have our carrying case here for the Teledyne FLIR Cirrus. Uh, really excited to break this thing open. This is what Teledyne FLIR sent me for this drone. So I don't know if this is a standard package or not, but these are all of the parts that came with the package they sent me to test and review. It actually comes in a nice, convenient, excuse the cat hair, um, backpack setting. So you can throw this right over your shoulders and carry it. I don't often use it that way just because of the nature of this drone, uh, but it is convenient if you are somebody that works in search and rescue and you want a really convenient portable solution, just throw this on your back and you can carry it to wherever you need to go to be able to conduct your mission. So we'll go ahead and we will open up the backpack carrying case for the Cirrus. And this is what comes in the Cirrus. So obviously we'll go ahead and undo those straps. We'll save the best for last. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. We got two batteries. Now, this is a two battery setup. It has hot swappable batteries, so you're able to take these out while the drone's on and replace them with other ones. They only sent me one set of batteries, so we're gonna have to work with this as best we can throughout the review process. It does have a smart light indicator to tell you what the charge is at for each battery. I'm not sure what that's about. We'll check that out in the user manual later to see. There you go, it's full charge. So we're good there. Um, got our two batteries, of course. Then we've got a few cables here. It seems like maybe this is a, yeah, this is a USB to USB-C with the charging brick here as well, Teledyne branded. Um, this probably uh, charges the controller. So we'll go ahead and put that aside as well. It looks like we have a plug for what I'm assuming will be that part right there. Uh, this is a power supply wire or plug. Go ahead and put that off to the side. And then yes, here is our battery charger and we do put the power cable in there to go ahead and charge it. Looks like maybe there's an on off switch for it as well. Yeah, those two things go together. So we'll pop those in. Uh, these little rubber feet are kind of hard to take out. Yeah, battery goes down in there. Let's see, it's sort of keyed weird. You can't really see very well, but the, the little notches on the keying here are a little higher on this side and they're a little higher pointing this way. So we'd actually stick it down in there like that. And if we had it plugged in and powered on, of course it would begin to charge if it needed. So we'll go ahead and put that aside, put our little rubber foot in there, put that aside as well. This looks like, yeah, maybe guide stickers. It looks like perhaps it tells you where things go, where to put them. I, I'm not sure what you would use these for. I've never seen anything like this. Um, I've not used a lot of enterprise level drones either though. So uh, it's very likely these have a purpose, but what it is, that's uh, beyond me, beats the heck out of me. Uh, looks like maybe we have everything taken care of in terms of accessories there. There wasn't a whole lot to it. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, certainly something to note is the, looks like the base package perhaps, uh, does not come with a whole heck of a lot. So now we just have the controller and the drone. Let's go ahead, pull the controller out. Our antenna come up like that. And then, oh, we have a nice little like rubberized section in here for the controls. It's got a really nice feel to it as well. I'm assuming this runs on an Android OS. We'll turn it on and see. 
I'm not gonna remove that in case um, for some reason they'd wanna sell this unit. I don't know that there are a lot of scenarios where they would do that. What's this down here? Just packaging, looks like maybe for one of the cables. We'll go ahead and throw that away. Controller starting up, everything looks good. Yeah, it looks like this is an Android OS that we're working with here. Um, so that's cool. Looks like we have our flight app here maybe. Yep, so you tap on that and it would open it up and connect to the drone if we had a connection. So I'm just gonna go ahead and power this off. Power off, because we don't need to see that. Uh, we do have an HDMI out on the top, which is helpful, especially in those search and rescue applications. That is, if you can get it open. I don't have any fingernails right now, so that's really, this isn't Teledyne's fault particularly, but okay, there you go. Yeah, oh, we have ethernet as well, that's cool. So we have an ethernet connection and we've got an HDMI out, which is helpful for search and rescue because you can actually wire this into a larger display so that more people can have eyes on what your controller has eyes on. And yeah, I was correct. That USB-C cable earlier uh, is to charge this controller. It also looks like we have a little port there to be able to put this on a tripod so you don't have to hold the controller, although it's not super heavy weight. I mean, it's sturdy. It feels like a nicely built controller, but it's not terribly heavy for the size of it. I'm actually kind of impressed by that. Uh, there is a USB, uh, yeah, USB, a uh, micro SD card slot there as well. Um, we do have a card in there to capture data off of the controller itself. So we'll go ahead, put that away, put that off to the side. Now, the coup de grace, the piece de resistance, the Cirrus from Teledyne Fleer. Oh, this isn't how I expected this to come out at all. Looks like we have rubber bands keeping, oh, I see, the arms fold. Okay, I'm gonna move this bag out of the way so that we can get a good look at the Cirrus. Okay, so we've got the Cirrus on the table here. Um, let's go ahead and just see what we can do. So it looks like the legs fold up. Oh, and then there's a notch in that little spinner and that locks the legs. Okay, so you have to just push it over the notch. Go ahead and do all four, see what this looks like. All set up. It's fairly easy. I mean, the notch system isn't ideal because it's kind of hard to see them, but it's not too bad. I imagine if you ran through this a few times, you'd eventually get the hang of it where it'd be very quick. Camera. Did I miss something? There's gotta be something to that. Let's get this unfolded and then we'll revisit the camera, the payload system. I can't imagine they sent me a drone uh, without a camera to review as well. I know it has a really awesome thermal sensor that comes with it, so we'll take a look. So it looks like you just fold these rubber bands off here. They're, they're heavy duty rubber bands. I mean, they're not like regular office rubber bands, so it does what it needs to do. And we'll just fold the propellers out and essentially, if we were gonna take this out into the field right now, it would be ready to fly. It's not a huge footprint. I'm actually impressed at how small the drone is considering what its capabilities are. Um, let's go ahead and dig into the bag and see if we can find the payload for this because ultimately that's what we wanna see once it's all set up. Okay, so I looked at this off camera for a few minutes because I could not, for the life of me, figure out where this payload was at. There's a little insert right here that you pull out. You never would have guessed it just by looking down in there. The only giveaway was this little notch here. You could see the plastic for the payload. So I'll go ahead and pull that out. And here is our Cirrus Teledyne Fleer thermal sensor, the TV-128. That's what it reads on the sticker there. I don't know if that's the actual name of the payload. If it's not, I'll go ahead and flash the name up here at the top of the screen. But yeah, it feels like a pretty nice heavy duty payload here. You've got an RGB sensor and you've got your thermal sensor, of course. Um, so it's got a dual sensor to it. We'll take that out in the field here in the next couple of days and review that just to see how the camera performs. So let's go ahead and get this attached to the Cirrus and see what the finished product looks like. Okay, so to attach this, it's not super difficult or tricky. You just sort of have to hit it just right. This just slides in there. You pull those little pinchers here in. So you have no resistance going in and you insert where the plug is right there. You'll see if I pull it out, we have a male plug port there and we've got a female plug port in there. So we'll go ahead, put that in, slide it in. And you'll hear once you let go of the clips, you push it, you one more push and the clips will clip into place and make that click sound. And there we have it. We have the Teledyne Fleer Cirrus all set up. The only thing we have to do is put the batteries in. So I'll go ahead and flip this the other way 
And essentially, let's see where the ports are. Okay, so essentially we need to put them in this way, power button facing up that way. And I believe it should be the same way for the other one. No, down, okay, so that's how you know you're putting your batteries incorrectly. The bottom battery, the power button is facing down. The top battery, the power button is facing up. And then once we've got that into place, we have another set of hooks there that you just put into place there and we're set to go. The Teledyne Fleer Cirrus completely unboxed. Let's take a look one last time at everything we get with this package. Okay, so of course we went through this already. I'm not entirely sure what these stickers are used for, if they're even necessary. Um, oh, I know what they're used for. They're used for the batteries. Put these on the batteries. If you get a bunch of different sets, you get your A and A battery, your top battery and your bottom battery, B, B, yep. These are battery stickers, that's what those are. So we have a, a whole sheet of battery stickers, A through J. I'm sure you can get more printed out if you'd like that. Uh, we've got our battery charging cable and our battery charging hub here. We can charge up to two batteries at a time. Uh, again, there's a power switch here you have to turn on in order for the base to start charging your batteries. So that comes in that package. We've also got, and speaking of chargers, a USB to USB-C charging cable with a power plug that you just plug in there. USB goes into the wall and then that charges what we've got right here, our controller, our ground station. Uh, again, this runs on an Android OS. Uh, you've got HDMI out as well as ethernet out. You've also got USB-C in the bottom as well as a micro SD card slot there and a port right here to be able to screw this onto a tripod so you don't have to hold it to operate the drone. Finally, we've got the Teledyne Fleer Cirrus drone. Really impressed with how small of a footprint this drone really has. I mean, it's fairly small, and for what it's marketed to be able to do, uh, that's super important that we've got a compact solution here. Uh, the drone itself, of course, comes with the thermal payload, the TV-128. Again, if that's not right, I'll put the actual name of the payload up at the top of the screen now. And then we also got two batteries. And again, these are hot swappable. So if you're mid-flight and you wanna swap one battery out or you wanna swap both batteries out, uh, you can do that without actually powering down the drone, which is super cool, especially for search and rescue missions where time is of the essence. And especially if you get a lead on one of those search and rescue missions, you don't wanna lose that, but you have to change the battery out. It's as simple as bringing this down quickly, swapping the batteries out without powering the drone off. You put it right back in the air once the batteries are fresh and ready to go. I'm excited to get this out into the field. We've got a lot of cool content planned for this. Uh, we're gonna do obviously the same that we always do, a series of videos talking about each of the aspects and the factors within this drone, uh, such as flight time, such as camera performance, you know the drill on those. We've also got a few pieces of specialized content that I plan on doing with this, uh, one of which we're gonna partner with our new friend, friend of the channel, Tony 2.0 from Random Adventures 2.0. He's gonna do a stealth camping challenge. I'm gonna try to find him with the thermal sensor uh, to sort of show the search and rest capabilities of this drone and the accuracy of that thermal sensor. I'm also going to do a fun Halloween content piece with this drone. Uh, I'll be visiting the Queen Mary in California. I'm gonna take this drone in, obviously can't fly the drone there. Um, it'd be difficult to fly the drone on a ship. But what I will be doing is I'll be putting the thermal camera to the test. If it is haunted on the Queen Mary and I feel a cold spot, we're gonna make sure that we can find the ghost and the uh, temperature change that it brings with it. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. There you have it, the Teledyne Fleer Cirrus drone unboxed. Not really unboxed, we just took it out of the case. The box outside of it was sort of lackluster, but really exciting stuff to finally get our hands on the Cirrus and get to see what we get in this package. Like I said, we've got a lot of cool content coming down the pipeline about the Cirrus, so make sure you check that out as we post it over the next few weeks. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button down below. It helps me out a lot. It helps get this video out into the algorithm to more folks like yourself. If you love drone content made by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, this is the channel for you, my friend. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon. It'll give you a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris the Drone Geek, and I am out of here. See ya! Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no rockin' polo, we the fight Everybody frontin' like they so, 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 so straight